When I tell you, I was fighting demons. Demons as in plural. For 18 months. I'm talking about catching viral meningitis. I had long COVID, leaky gut, cystic acne, brain fog, vertigo and balance issues, irregular periods, crippling anxiety, chronic inflammation, weight gain. And at one point I even started developing symptoms of Bell's palsy, which is where half of your face goes numb, starts twitching, and then it droops down for a long time, like um, Sylvester Stallone. Am I missing anything? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary and today we are getting personal. I am sharing a story, my story, one that I have kept hidden from the world for a very long time because I didn't want people to know what I was going through. I mean, it was 18 months of hell, but today I am an open book. Now I am a health and fitness coach, as I'm sure y'all know, but for that year and a half, I felt like the furthest thing from a health and fitness coach. Like health, who is she? I don't know her, clearly. I really went through it. And I went through it in silence for the most part. I didn't want it to stop me from building a business, going to the gym, making content, you know. From the outside looking in, it may have seemed as if everything was okay, but I was deteriorating by the day. I was sick, I was miserable, I was desperate. And it got to a point where I disappeared off the face of the planet and Today I'm explaining why. I quit the gym, I quit social media, I literally just stopped seeing everybody and everyone was asking like, you're Mary, where are you? We haven't heard from you, we haven't seen you. I isolated myself and it was because I needed to heal. And the way I was living my life was not allowing me to heal the way I needed to. So I went dark, but it worked, a bitch, got through it and a bitch bounced back. And today I'm spilling the tea on exactly what happened, how I healed my chronic health issues and my nervous system through mindset, nutrition, functional medicine, and just overall holistic health. No pills or drugs or medications necessary. <laughs> All right, so background context, it's 2021 and I'm living my best life. I am going through my first bulk, I'm gaining weight and I was really skinny for a really long time. So that was music to my ears, finally being able to build muscle. I had just started Snatched Fitness that year and I was growing and I made a lot of money in my first year. I did really, really well. So things were looking great. Okay, then August happened. And in August, 2021, I got viral meningitis. And that word to me is like the equivalent of Voldemort, like he who must not be named. M -m -m meningitis. Ugh. So for those of you who are like, wait, isn't it that thing that babies get that kill them? That's bacterial meningitis. So it affects the meninges in the brain. I didn't have that variant. I had the viral one, which thankfully is not deadly, but it is pretty damn debilitating. So common symptoms, which, I mean, I had all of them, were things like stiff neck for weeks, really, really bad migraines, like the worst you could ever have that just were incessant, like you'd feel them all day, memory and concentration problems, vertigo and balance issues. Like when we went to the doctor to figure out what was going on, they just said, oh, it's vertigo. And I was like, bro, no, <laughs> it's not just the fact that I cannot coordinate my steps and I keep bumping into walls. Photosensitivity was a big one. Like I couldn't look at screens. I couldn't look at the light. I just needed to be in a dark room. Also fever-like symptoms and just feeling so fatigued. Like I have never felt fatigue like that. Brain fog was a big one and like crippling anxiety. And I know that it was more of a physiological anxiety that was manifesting in my body because my nervous system was obviously under attack. I mean, you know, meningitis affects the nervous system. And so it was so overstimulated. And the acute phase of this illness lasts about two months. So I was in bed for eight weeks with all of the symptoms that I just mentioned. And it happened to be 
during lockdown. So I was thankful that I was actually able to stay at home um, without any extra pressure from work and whatnot. But yeah, I had just quit my job. So I was still working full time in the corporate world. And because Snatched was doing so well, I was like, yeah, I'm freaking gonna quit because I'm killing it and I'm building this baby. And then yeah, I get sick with something that puts me on my ass for two months. And I had like just enrolled in a business mentorship and it was just a really stressful time to go from having a stable income to possibly not being able to work because I'm sick on top of the illness itself. So yes, it was a blessing in terms of timing, being able to stay at home. And there were also a lot of blessings in the fact that I was still able to get clients. I was still able to do check-ins and actually like service my clients. I was able to finish the entire business mentorship and grow my business in bed with all my symptoms. I actually don't know how I did it. Like I still wonder, but I think it was just sheer determination and will. And I'm someone who does not go down easy. So I was like, I ain't letting no illness get to me. Like I'm not letting this hold me back. I've got goals, I've got a life to live. And so yeah, I would like take breaks throughout the day. Like I couldn't stare at a computer screen for too long. So I would do like, you know, an hour of work and then the migraine would just get too overwhelming that I'd have to take a break from my screen. I would nap or I'd read um, or just listen to a podcast and then go back and do that. And I just did that for two months. I didn't move. I didn't work out, obviously. I barely ate. Like it was just yeah, a really hard time. Now, I started doing research on meningitis because there's not much out there. And yeah, from what I could tell, the recovery was anywhere between six and 12 months. And that was something I was not willing to accept. I was like, hell no, nah. I'm gonna be out of here in a couple months. I will be spick and speck, I will be perfect. I'll be my old self, right? That couldn't be further from the truth. To this day, 18 months later-ish, um, I still have neurological symptoms and I still experience the aftermath of meningitis and I definitely am not the same person. I don't have the same health and the same capacity that I once did. That was a truth that was very hard for me to accept. It took me about a year to accept that I was never going to be the same. So to give you an idea about some of the long-term symptoms, I mean, common ones are things like issues with eyesight and memory, um, like really bad memory loss. Thank God I didn't have those symptoms, but chronic fatigue was the biggest one for me. I, I was very, very tired all the time and the smallest thing was so exhausting to me. And yeah, I, I had chronic fatigue for a really long time. Brain fog and anxiety were also really big ones. Anxiety more so from a physiological perspective rather than psychological. And yeah, the difficulty concentrating, burning out really fast, not having the physical capacity to get through as much exercise as I used to like going for walks I would do half the steps in double the time even till now like I just I can't do as much activity as I used to without getting very very tired so I got out of bed and I recovered from the acute um, stage of meningitis in about October and I went full throttle I went straight back to the gym and not just like easing my way into it no I was hitting PBs like every week I was doing a deficit because I felt fluffy after not training for two months, obviously. And also I had just interrupted my bulk, right? So I felt fluffy and I wanted to lose weight. So I didn't do a moderate deficit. No, I did a 1500 calorie deficit, which at the time might've been like a 30, 35% cut to my calories. I was doing like 12,000 steps a day, training four days a week. I was like doing crazy compound lifts. I also started TikTok and I blew up very quickly. I went from like zero followers to like almost 40,000 followers in a matter of two or three months. And so that was obviously a huge um, opportunity that I wanted to harness. So I was posting every day. I got a lot of clients from TikTok. So my business was booming and yeah, I was working around the clock. I did not get a summer because in Australia, our summer begins in December. So it starts warming up end of the year. Yeah, I didn't get a summer. I was working, I was grinding. And I, at one point, think I had about 40 clients, which is literally like double what I would classify as full capacity. 
So yeah, just to give you an idea of where I was at. So one minute I am literally bedridden with a debilitating condition and the next I'm literally blowing up and having my five minutes of fame and trying to do everything all at once. So no doubt that was not sustainable, but I was in such denial. I just thought, yep, no, I'm healed, I'm all good. And that didn't last long. So January comes around a few months later and I catch COVID. And it wasn't a bad one at all. I think it was not Delta, that was really bad. It was the one after Delta, Omicron. I can't even remember. But yeah, it, it was like, what, three days and I kicked it. The symptoms weren't bad. I felt totally fine. Like it was, I was like, what? Is this what we just spent the last two years in lockdown for, really? But anyway, that's a story for another day. I hope this doesn't flag my video. So I get COVID and I thought, okay, I'll just go back to what I was doing. But when I tell you, it's like I hit a brick wall. I don't know what happened, but out of nowhere, I went from feeling fine to feeling even worse than when I had meningitis. So I had typical long COVID symptoms. Now with the current research that we have on COVID, we know that the spike protein which is what induces infection or like gains entry into the cell to take over it, which is how a virus works. That spike protein is not local to the respiratory tract only. It actually affects all systems of the body. So in English, what that means is if you catch COVID, don't expect that you're only gonna get cold and flu symptoms you know, conducive to the respiratory tract, you're gonna get other problems. So I'm sure you know, like most women have had reproductive problems or period issues ever since catching COVID, either irregular periods or long drawn out bleeds. And yeah, just th things are funky, right? Likewise, a lot of people getting neurological symptoms and brain problems, gut issues. And I mean, the big one, um, cardiovascular problems, especially with young men, this, is the reason why we're seeing all of this is because COVID is a very unique virus in that it doesn't behave the way other viruses do. But anyway, I'm jumping ahead. I think you know where I'm going with that one. But anyway, back to me and my story. COVID fucked me basically. So I had gut problems. I had period problems. I had brain problems. I also had really bad cystic acne and this cystic acne hit me for like a year. No, no, no. A year and a bit actually, like I only just healed it recently and I still struggle with it now. I know it was linked to gut problems because I was getting a lot of bloating. I was suddenly intolerant to so many foods. The anxiety went from bad to horrific. I was waking up every morning with such debilitating anxiety on the verge of a panic attack that I couldn't start my day. Like I literally had no way to calm my body down to prepare for what I had to do. I was just overcome by this panic. And alongside that, I was very inflamed. Like I think I gained three, four kilos in the space of like a week. And like, I was just so shocked as to how that could have happened when, you know, I was eating the same, you know? I was very puffy, very inflamed. And I also had very bad chronic fatigue. I think what happened was I hadn't fully healed from meningitis. And then I went straight into a cesspool of stress. And then when I was already like at the bottom of that cesspool, COVID comes on top like psych bitch. And yeah, my body just wasn't prepared to fight it or more so it was just in a very vulnerable state. So it was very susceptible to the long COVID symptoms that I ended up having. So COVID was the fuel added to the fire that was already there. And naturally I burnt out. I hit rock bottom, I was desperate. I couldn't sustain the level of work that I was doing. I couldn't sustain my clients. I couldn't sustain the content. I couldn't sustain my training. And I just felt like so disconnected from myself. And my body was just so unpredictable. I didn't have trust with my body. And I knew that I just, I, I couldn't keep this up. Now, of course, I went to doctors all throughout meningitis and COVID. And initially I was told I had vertigo. And then they said, if you suspect you have meningitis, we need to do a lumbar puncture, which is where they basically take spinal fluid from the lumbar. And it's like a very invasive procedure to just diagnose it. And even after they diagnose it, there's no real medications you can take. So I just thought, what's the purpose of me 
undergoing that procedure just to confirm something I already know I have because I have all the symptoms and it's also an outbreak in my area. So that was one experience. The next experience with doctors was related to long COVID. I was told I had IBS and that my symptoms were driven by anxiety, AKA it was all in my head. I tried to get blood work done and they would give me just the basics, even though I explained that my periods were all off, my hormones were going crazy, my cystic acne was going crazy. And they said, no, we need to justify why you need these tests. And I said, okay, are the symptoms I've just presented not enough of a justification for you? And then of course the doctor went on a, on a whole spiel about how the medical system, Medicare, audits what tests are provided and that he could lose his license. So yeah, obviously my taxpayer dollars are not going where I'd like it to go, but story for another day. The doctor also prescribed me the pill and just some symptoms for my IBS and for my cystic acne, which obviously I refused to take. So yeah, at that point that was, enough for me. I was like, I'm done with doctors. Started to do some research into naturopaths and, you know, coaches who specialize in gut and just neurological health. And that's where I found my coach, Alex. So shout out Strength of Saad. I've shouted him out a few times, but yeah, you can tell he's obviously had a big impact on me and my health and my coaching. So I worked with Alex. We did a lot of blood work. I had to pay for a fair few um, out of pocket, obviously, but that's okay. Definitely worth it. And we found a lot of alarming problems, obviously one of them being high inflammatory markers. I also had low progesterone, which is implicated in stress and can potentially lead to things like PCOS, which I was very concerned about and wanted to get on top of. So we got on a good nutritional protocol, which was gluten-free, um, sugar-free, pretty much paleo. I did try the low FODMAP diet, but I didn't have SIBO, which is what we suspected. So SIBO is a bacterial overgrowth in the small intestines and they feed off of fiber. So cutting out fiber through a low FODMAP diet, which is like cutting out, you know, like bananas and broccoli and things like that will help stop the bacterial overgrowth. I didn't have that. I had leaky gut, which I can talk about in another video. So the long and the short of leaky gut is that your intestines are surrounded by a barrier or a lining of cells, okay? And this epithelial lining basically keeps toxins and, and things that shouldn't be in the bloodstream out. Now, what happens when you are under extreme stress or you take a lot of medications or you get COVID or you're already really inflamed, eat a lot of foods that you shouldn't, things like gluten, that intestinal lining becomes compromised or breached almost, okay? And what happens is it becomes leaky, very permeable. So things get in that shouldn't. And when that happens, that leads to a localized immune response, which pretty much means that there's gonna be inflammation in the gut. And then if that leaks out to the rest of the system, can lead to a lot of adverse effects. And you can also get leaky brain, which is obviously what happened in my situation. And I could talk about leaky gut and leaky brain forever. I will definitely make a video about it, but that's the context behind what was going on with me. So I cleaned up my diet and I reduced my stress immensely. And just those two things alone did wonders for my gut health and my food intolerances that came out of nowhere. Now, another big thing that Alex and I worked on was effective stress management and biohacking to control anxiety. And the biggest ones for me were meditation, which I'd never really done before, and journaling, especially during those mornings where I'd wake up and I'd just have debilitating anxiety. Learning how to finally control it and not let it ruin my day through mindfulness, breathing, meditations, to literally control the body was game changing. Um, so it didn't take long, I would say two months to really get my symptoms in check. My periods were back to normal. I think the only thing really was the chronic fatigue that didn't go and that took a long time to get better and the cystic acne as well. Those were the two that probably stuck around for longer than I wanted them to. And I think the reason why is because my stress and my nutrition were just not perfect for the rest of the year. Not to say that you have to be perfect, but like I definitely ate more gluten than I should have. And I definitely was a lot more stressed than I should have been. From March, 2022, 
up until September, I was in a vicious cycle of burnout. Back to what had happened right after I got meningitis, I continued to try to grow my businesses, scale, you know, social media, kill my training and attempt fat loss multiple times because I had all this extra weight that I was carrying mostly from inflammation, but definitely from fat that I'd gained because of all the health issues that I had. I just wasn't on point and I just gained weight that I wanted to get rid of. I just tried all of those things at once and I, I failed. Like my training was terrible all year. I would have one good workout and I would be in bed for three days. I'm not even joking, I'm not exaggerating. Like going to the gym was the one thing I could do in a day. If I went to the gym, I wasn't doing anything else because it was so taxing on my body. And I just was training with too much intensity. I know that's like the opposite issue that most people have, but you know, I've always prided myself in being a hard worker. But in this instance, it was actually working against me. So training was a dud. My business did do well, but it was not sustainable and I was just really struggling especially with content to put out quality content and not feel burnt out and trying to manage that on top of chronic fatigue is really hard because the smallest thing is so exhausting it feels like you're fighting an uphill battle when half the recording doesn't have audio so you have to do the whole thing again Ugh, the woes of a content creator anyway back to what i was saying so fat loss Oh, how I failed. Oh my days. I have never been hit so hard in my ego as somebody who tells people how to lose fat and does it successfully. For the life of me, a bitch could not lose the fat. So I did, I think maybe four or five deficits and I would just do what I'd always done. 15, 1600 calories, 10 to 12,000 steps a day, four really hard training sessions a week. And I would get to week four and I would be so exhausted. I wouldn't have lost any more than maybe 500 grams or a kilogram at most. And that's mostly coming from water weight. I was flabbergasted. I was offended. Like my hard work is not enough. And so I would just keep working harder, thinking maybe I'm not adhering as much as I thought. Maybe I need to drop my calories or increase my steps. And just getting through that was like fighting an uphill battle. For the first time in my life, I could not lose weight. And no matter how hard I worked, I was very, very resistant to weight loss. I was so fatigued, like putting one foot in front of the other on my 12,000 step walks was gruesome and like i kid you not i would be walking and the whole world is spinning i am so dizzy my body feels like i've got like a 10 kilo kettlebell on each foot i was tin man and i was like just get through it and in hindsight i'm like damn like how did i do that i i could not even imagine putting myself through what I did. But yeah, despite all my efforts, I get to week five or week six of a deficit, having not really lost much weight. And because everything I was doing was so unsustainable, I couldn't keep up the deficit. So I would stop. And it's funny, when you're in a cycle of yo-yo dieting, a lot of the time, you don't realize it. 90% of the clients that come to me have a history of metabolic adaptation, yo-yo dieting, and just being very resistant to weight loss. And it's so funny that I couldn't see it with myself. Yes, that's the issue when you're too close to your problems. I think that the biggest reason that I let it get that far is because I'm sure most coaches know there is a very big pressure in the industry to remain lean. Not to say that I was like super lean. I mean, I don't mind being a bit thick, but it was a little bit too much for me. And I just thought, how can I call myself a coach if I can't achieve the things that I teach? So it was very closely linked to my sense of self-worth, self-esteem, credibility, and alongside the fact that I wasn't able to do something that I set out to do. So I was extremely hard on myself and that's why I was overtraining and restricting calories for the most part of the year. And then of course that in turn led to a lot of emotional stress. Oh my days, the cries that I crew. Oh, it was 
literally Noah's flood up in this bitch because I was so up and down. I would wake up and experience the entire spectrum of human emotions in the space of like two hours. One minute I'm anxious, the next minute I'm depressed. One minute I have mustered the tiniest bit of energy to get through a gruesome workout. The next minute I'm literally lying on my deathbed questioning my existence. I reckon I was burning an extra 500 calories a day just experiencing the emotional dysfunction that was going on in my life. I was chronically stressed, chronically fatigued, chronically inflamed. I walked around with moon face for a long time. Like I would put my makeup on and I was like heavy on the makeup at that time when I was going out to see people, which was a very rare occasion because I did not recognize my face. It was not my face. Like jawline who? My nose was like pregnancy nose. So I would cake my face and I remember one time I took a photo with a friend and I looked back at the photo like holy shit is that what I look like I'll post it up on the screen so you can see but yeah that face is not this face like it's giving Shrek and Fiona so you get the gist of where I was at in my life this went on for a good I'm gonna say like eight to nine months of 2022 I know that from the outside looking in you'd say okay well obviously there's a lot of shit going on maybe you should spend some time chilling out not being so hard on yourself and healing and i think part of being so close to your problems is that you belittle them i was in denial about just how bad it had gotten. I thought that even with my health issues i can still do x y and z and i would say oh posting four times a week on social media is not that hard i can still do that even if i'm in bed or getting to the gym three days a week is not that difficult i should still be able to do it meanwhile i'm expecting myself to do like rdls and hip thrusts and you know bent over rows all with a barbell all in the same session and then attempt to do a little bit of cardio afterwards like i i was delusional in terms of load of stress that i was carrying and my body's capacity at the time to handle that stress. Then September 2022 happened and this is when I hit rock bottom. Like I thought COVID was rock bottom. <laughs> that was like level one of hell. I was at this point maybe level seven of hell. It was bad. So I did a powerlifting testing day which is basically where you test your one rep maxes. And I didn't even do it for all three exercises. It was just for deadlifting. And I felt on top of the moon. It was such a good day. I was with my coach and my friends and all that. And I came home and I kid you not, I spent three days in bed. My nervous system completely shut down, completely. When I say shut down, I mean, I couldn't walk because my nerves were not communicating with my muscles and I could not coordinate movement. I was so bloated and puffy everywhere. I think I gained two kilos overnight. I couldn't fit into my clothes. And I remember because I had a gala that weekend as well as a conference and I couldn't attend either of those events. Partly because I couldn't fit into anything and I looked terrible, but mostly because I literally couldn't move and I couldn't sustain a conversation. I was so anxious and it wasn't even like a psychological thing, like my body was trembling, trembling. And this is the worst part. I started to develop signs of Bell's palsy, which is when half of your face starts to twitch and go numb, and then eventually it droops. And this is something that runs in my family. So my sister had it for a year. And the older you are, the more likely it is that it sticks with you for life. Someone like Sylvester Stallone comes to mind. And that's when I decided enough was enough. I was done. I was so done. I was crying and bawling my eyes out and saying, I can't handle another thing. I can't handle another health burden, another disease. I can't do it anymore. And I remember just shouting at God, like, how could you let this happen? After all I've been through, you're really gonna give me Bell's palsy too on top of everything? I was so mad at him and I was like, if you do this to me, if my face is fucked for the rest of my life, I will never forgive you. I was in the pit of despair. But in hindsight, I realized that if that had not happened, I probably wouldn't have been forced to take the decision that I did, which was to quit the gym. I obviously had extreme overtraining syndrome where my body just couldn't function anymore. I decided to make a radical change to my diet, which I'll talk about in a second. But most of all, I decided to finally hit pause 
and heal. And I knew that that was gonna take a long time, six months, a year maybe, I didn't know. But it's funny, I went that whole year like, no, I don't want my life to be on pause. I've got shit to do. And so I kept pushing and pushing and it wasn't that fruitful at the end of the day. And on top of that, I was eventually forced to take that break, which turned out to be longer than it could have been. So I went dark. I disappeared off the face of the planet. I stopped posting on social media. I stopped taking on new clients and growing my business. I quit the gym entirely for about two months and I tried the carnivore diet. So I had done a lot of research into the best nutritional approach to reduce inflammation and accelerate healing. And I had already been doing a paleolithic diet for a while, which is essentially eating from the earth or whole foods. To be honest though, I was eating gluten here and there. I was eating some seed oils. I was eating refined sugars and those are all not within the paleo template. So I already knew that it wasn't enough for what I needed. I had heard a lot of success stories about people who have things like autoimmune problems, metabolic dysfunction, uh, chronic inflammation, and they had all raved about the carnivore diet. So I had done my research and I decided, you know what? <laughs> I'm already at rock bottom. I don't think it can get worse than this. Let's give it a go. Now, I am very aware that this is not a sustainable approach. That's totally fine. And it's not something that I would recommend to anybody unless they were in dire circumstances like I was. But it is an extreme response to an extreme situation. And I always knew that it was going to be short term. So I thought I would give it three months. I ended up only doing it for two, but it fucking worked. So I ate animal products. I ate a lot of grass fed meat. I consumed a little bit of dairy and about halfway through, I also started to implement some organic honey and a piece of fruit a day or so. And that template worked really well for me. Surprisingly, it was really easy to start. I thought that I would have a lot of cravings and, you know, carbohydrate withdrawal, but I actually didn't have any of that. In fact, within the first three days, I noticed such a dramatic change to the mess that I was when I had finished that powerlifting testing day and all those symptoms and dysfunction had started to within a week of carnivore. First of all, I dropped a few kilos, obviously, because I wasn't eating any carbs or barely any but um, my puffiness had gone down a lot. My emotional state went from roller coaster ride to scenic cruise. Like I didn't feel anything. I felt so neutral. I'd wake up and go to bed and my baseline was the same. It didn't go up and down, which I found really interesting. I didn't have any cravings. I was really full because of all the fats that I was eating, all of the unsaturated healthy fats and I, felt amazing for the first time in so long. I slept, oh, the sleep that I slept. I did not even go for a walk. I did no activity whatsoever. Spent a lot of time in bed, a lot of time at home, but I had started to finally heal. To be fair though, I did still feel very tired. And I think it was because I was intermittent fasting as well, which I heard was really good for healing. But I think for somebody that has chronic fatigue, intermittent fasting is not a smart idea just because you have an issue with your mitochondria. Your mitochondria cannot produce the energy ATP that you need. So ensuring that you have continual calories coming in is going to help you. And so when I did stop intermittent fasting and I started to eat first thing in the morning and in regular intervals, my energy levels did start to pick up. In that time, I took up a lot of reading, drawing. I hadn't sketched in so long. Especially a lot of time with family. I was watching movies. I was upskilling myself a lot since I wasn't growing my business or posting online. I was studying functional medicine and integrative nutrition as a means to heal. And it was overall a time for reflection on top of the healing. And it really helped me figure out what I wanted to do in this next stage of my life. And I think it really highlighted that it's actually okay for your life to be on pause for a little bit because what I was doing wasn't working and I needed a radical change in my life. And that time being on hold 
actually propelled me much further than I thought it would. So that was my life for about six weeks. I'm not gonna lie, it did start to get boring and it also started to get pretty unsustainable. So when I started to notice that I was craving carbs, like truly craving them, and the carnivorous template was just not working anymore. I found myself binging. It didn't happen often, maybe two or three times, but that was enough. That was enough for me to know it's time to exit out of this diet. I've gotten what I needed to get out of it, but it's time to start reverse dieting, introducing more calories, which was hard to do when you're eating so much protein and fat. It's time to start implementing movement again, implementing carbs. And so that's essentially what I did. It took me, I would say about another month to get to a point where I was eating about 2,500 calories a day, went back to that paleo template, which my body started to respond really well to because there was no inflammation. I started to go for walks and slowly build up my capacity. I would train at home with very light weights. And this is a time where I noticed the biggest change in my skin. My skin was the bane of my existence for that entire year and right after I finished carnivore after eight weeks my skin was glowing I wasn't getting period breakouts and for the first time like I could leave the house and not have to cover up behind my hair or you know wear a bit of concealer it, it felt good it felt really good so then I got back into the gym and I purposely chose a very low-key quiet gym not my home gym because of a couple of reasons the first reason is I went way too hard being at my home gym where I know a lot of people there, I have a community there, and it's almost this ego thing where it's like, I wanna put on a show, you know what I mean? I didn't want that. And I knew that being in that environment would force me to go harder than I should. I really wanted to go slow. And I think another part of it is I just didn't wanna answer questions. Like, yo Mary, where have you been? We haven't seen you in so long, you good? I just could not be fucked. I was in my own, bubble and I was happy with it. So I was going to the gym and this is where another big lesson came in. You need to honor and respect your body when it comes to training. I was overtraining for a year and I think the time off as hard as it was, was necessary because it humbled me. It taught me that I need to respect my body and what it's capable of. So I figured out what works best for me and I'm still doing that till today. So first of all, I do mostly machine work. I don't touch barbells anymore. And for the heavy compound lifts that I do, like Smith machine hip thrusts or Bulgarian split squats, I will only do two sets and I will purposely go to maybe like a three rep in reserve instead of in the past, I would go to like a one rep in reserve. The intense sets that I was pushing to one rep in reserve or going all the way to failure was reserved for machine work where I would feel like I'm having a productive session. I'm actually training the muscle hard, but I'm not getting that systemic fatigue that leaves me dizzy at the end of the session and makes me feel like I'm about to vomit and leaves me in bed recovering for the rest of the day. And I was starting at two to three sessions per week. Now I'm sitting at four and I feel good. I feel like this is training that's sustainable and productive. And whilst I'm still not at my old capacity, I'm just so much more grateful for the fact that I can actually train again. And I'm not comparing me now to me last year or me the year before. I'm just grateful that my body can move and it's not going to fail me and that I have this trust within my body again and vice versa, my body trusts me again. Likewise, with my steps, like for me, 8,000 steps is enough. If I get 10 or 12,000, I can feel the fatigue coming up. I think I just, I have built the body literacy and I know what my limits are. I no longer fear a little bit of stress like a hard workout or a poor night's sleep. I trust that my body can still get through it and I trust that my body isn't gonna tap out, you know? It's not gonna puff up the next day like it used to because it was just so vulnerable to the tiniest stresses. So let's talk about today. I've explained what my training looks like, my nutrition. I am currently in a deficit and I have earned it this time. I've spent the time reverse dieting to rebuild metabolic capacity again. I am actually responding well to this deficit because it's very slight. I'm not doing no 1500 calories a day again, at least for the foreseeable future. For me, 1900, sometimes even 2000 calories is enough. I don't go crazy with steps or training and I eat mostly paleolithic. Yeah, I have a bit of gluten here and there. 
have a bit of sugar here and there. But the bulk of my food is grass-fed butter, grass-fed meats, rice, potato, uh, fruits, a little bit of vegetables. And I think that carnival really shaped the way that I eat today. I've accepted that this is a slower approach, but I don't want to put my body under that stress again. And I know that it's probably gonna take me six months to lose the weight that I'd like to and to get my strength and muscle back. And I'm totally fine with that. I've reset my expectations and I think as long as I can sustain this for months and months and months and my energy levels can remain consistent, then I'm happy. And I'm okay if I don't lose much weight every month because it's not the most important thing to me anymore. In terms of work, I have been building up my work capacity. Again, bit by bit, I'm not going all in only to burn out a few months later. You know, I've done a lot of new things. So again, that time off has helped me reassess what I really wanna do. So I decided I wanted to start this channel. I decided I wanted to move into more holistic health coaching rather than just training and nutrition. I decided to start a second business. I have so much more clarity in terms of where I wanna go in my journey through life and the purpose that I want to fulfill with what I do every day. And so ultimately, I look back on the last 18 months and I think, damn, I bitch really went through it. <laughs> but I feel like I'm a much better coach because of it, you know? Like I have had so many clients come to me in the past with so many different issues from, you know, Hashimoto's to PCOS to metabolic dysfunction and, you know, resistance with weight loss to, you know, really bad anxiety and depression and gut problems. And I always knew a little bit about it, but I never felt competent to actually take a client through all of these things. And I know I wouldn't have ventured into this space if I hadn't gone through it myself. And as hard as it was, I have a deep appreciation for what I went through because I really changed as a person. My priorities changed and I just have so much more respect for my body. And I look at stress and you know goals in a much different way now. I'm not so hard on myself. I don't take myself as seriously. You know, like who cares if I didn't have a great session? Who cares if I didn't hit my KPIs for the week? I was putting way too much stress on myself and I just don't think I will ever do that again because it's just not worth it. So if my story has touched you in any way and you have a chronic health problem that's stopping you from being able to you know get snatched and lose the fat gain the muscle and strength and become somebody who isn't stuck in this toxic cycle where they've lost trust in their bodies and it's so unpredictable then reach out there are people that can help you and you are not alone. If I can sit here today, having killed the list of problems that I mentioned at the start of this video and maintain it, then there's hope for you too. It's about asking for help when you realize that everything you've tried has failed or that it's time to stop ignoring those underlying health problems. You know, I'm so thankful that I've built up a network of doctors, naturopaths, psychologists, and other health practitioners that can work with me to help you heal. So if this is something that interests you, then you can actually book in a free discovery call with me. I would recommend that you jump on the website first, have a look at my coaching style and what's included in the coaching package so you can get an idea about what you're getting into and if we're a good fit. So I'll leave all of the details in the description box below. And I hope that I get to meet amazing ladies who are ready for a full transformation of the mind, the body, and the soul. And that is it for me, y'all. I will see you in next week's video, which I promise will be a lot more upbeat than this one was. Anyway, ciao.